Good evening, Facebook fans and friends. How are you this evening? I was telling uh, Damascene, Damascene Pierre Paul, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Thank you. I was telling that Gilbert and I have done a lot of shows, and it never ceased to amaze me. As many people as we have interviewed, there's almost many, many more to interview, and they have these awesome careers and these awesome stories that we're dying for you to hear. So th this evening, we're, we're featuring Damascene, and he's going to tell us about his fabulous career. Uh, he was a former manager for Patti LaBelle. Yes. Oh, you tell it. Oh. Go ahead. Yes, I, I used to manage Patti LaBelle. Uh, from 19, I'm sorry, from 2009. Uh huh. To, no, from 1999 to 2009 for 10 years. 10 years? Yes. What a terrific experience. Yes. What did you do for Patti LaBelle? Uh, initially, I was uh, Miss LaBelle's bodyguard mm -hmm. for about a year or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miss Pat, being the personable woman that she is, she really liked to ask you questions and see where your head is at. And she used to always have conversation with me about the industry and decisions. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was impressed with my decisions. And eventually, from a bodyguard, I became her manager. Okay. Yes. And she's a legend. Absolutely. Fell off your homegrown. Absolutely. Uh, I can't say a fantastic singer. Yes, she a is. A beautiful person. Yes, she is. She has so many gifts that... Uh, God has given her, Absolutely. and she she shares it with people. Yes, yeah, she does. And what what people don't understand about Miss LaBelle is that actually, when we used to do casino gigs, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they would want sometimes they want the act to go a certain way, like sometimes walk through the game room, mm -hmm. but Miss Pat would always want to walk through the service area. Okay. Because she really enjoy when the service people, the people who made the beds and stuff, would yeah. come up to her. And she yeah. would stop and talk to them and give them, you know, sign her autograph. Mm -hmm. She was Personable. always generous yes. like that. Yes. She was very caring to people. What learnings did you learn from working with Patty oh, LaBelle? Miss, Miss Pat was a, a consummate pro. She would always, um, it was, was her style. She had a certain style about when things bothered her or, or mm -hmm. she didn't like the sound. It was mm -hmm. a way that she <laughs> would address it. Mm -hmm. um, she tried her best never to insult people or make people right. feel uncomfortable because she had a very loving way about her. Okay. So I learned a lot from that. Okay. From Pat. And and after you left uh, Pilot Bell, what did you do after that? Oh, Where actually, you... uh, I managed uh, Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas. Yes. My, okay. I have a partner of mine, a gentleman by the name of Lamar Berno. He was actually managing Mr. Lucas. He he knew my assistant, Stephanie Maddox, so he contacted her mm -hmm. and said, do you think Damascene would be interested in helping me manage Frank Lucas? Mm -hmm. So I met Mr. Lucas at uh, Michael's Diner out in Jenkin Town. Okay. And, okay. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Lucas and I and Lamar and Stephanie mm -hmm. had a great conversation. And mm -hmm. the following day, Mr. Lucas wanted to meet with me again. And we met at, uh, it's, a, it's the old diner now, the Oak Lane Diner okay. on um, top of uh, Broad Street and 66. And Mr. Lucas was very impressed with me. And I presented him with a contract. He signed the contract. Mm. And I had this watch. I had this rose gold watch that was given to me as a gift, an Invitica watch. And Mr. Lucas was so impressed with the watch, he kept staring at the watch. So um, I said, Mr. Lucas, you like the watch? He said, I love that watch. So I took the watch off my wrist and I put it on his wrist. And he, oh, wow. And he was like, Thank you, Dom. Thank you. I said, Sir, you have more time now. So oh. I managed <laughs> to cute. wind up managing yeah. him for like about five years, five, five and a half years after that. And learnings from, from oh, Mr. Lucas? Oh, my goodness, yes. And he was, Mr. Lucas was a lot like Miss Pat in a sense as far as <laughs> yeah. being a disciplinarian. Yeah. Uh -huh. and he always wanted you to be mm -hmm. a gentleman. He always demanded that you be respectful. Mm -hmm. And that's the way Miss LaBelle was. Miss Pat was always about carrying yourself with dignity and pride and mm -hmm. being a, a upstanding person. That meant a lot to her. And believe it or not, Mr. Lucas was very much similar. He was the same way. He Isn't always it? expected you to mm -hmm. be a gentleman. Mm -hmm. and behave yourself and he mm -hmm. he believes strongly in family yes and you have such a personality I, they just took to you right away i'm grateful i'm mm -hmm. grateful i always i think any time you have any blessings it doesn't come from you it comes from a higher source yeah so i'm very grateful for that and and do you play an instrument no i actually well because you've been this like well, music you know, as, film it, you know true. it's all well when i was a yeah. child my mother uh, i went to catholic school for nine years saint athanasius catholic school up in uh 
West Oak Lane. Okay. My mother used to send me to piano school. I used to go, it used to be a Yamaha piano store on 77th and Ogons. And in the basement, they had piano that. lessons. So my mother used to send me that. there every Saturday mm -hmm. to take piano lessons. I love music, but she couldn't afford it, so I stopped going. However, mm -hmm. I have an ear mm -hmm. for music. I, I usually have a, good, I have a good ear for good sound. I have a good, mm -hmm. good ear for when the instrument is right. So I guess I am yeah. a musician yeah. in a somewhat, yeah. somewhat way. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, I, I think about um, when, I, when I listen to you, you, you're speaking and you're talking about being with Patti LaBelle. I know that you've heard you had heard such good music. Oh you know, my goodness! Such yes. good music, and then the film. You've learned so many things. Yes. That you're able to to give us some inspirational words about that because although you were her her manager, it was certain things that you had to get accustomed to. In the music world, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Um, her rehearsals, oh. how hard she worked at absolutely. her rehearsals. So for all of these, all of you guys out there that's wanting to get into the music business, or you know, or in the music business, Dominique, uh, Dominique can tell you how hard it is, how hard she worked. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Oh, Miss Labelle, her her rehearsals were like shows. Yeah, I, I can mean, bet. She went very hard in her rehearsals, and she was a perfectionist in a sense. Mm -hmm. She knew when the drummer was not right. She knew oh, when the God. instruments yeah. was not playing right, and she would make her corrections there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. she was a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And she treated her people very well. So uh, everybody loved to play for her. Everybody loved working for Miss Pat because she was that kind of person. And she would cook sometimes and bring oh, food to yeah, rehearsal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, she was always like a mom to everybody yes well what are you doing now are you still working and doing films i mean with films oh yes i am actually uh right now what brings me here is the artist that i was working with today billy uh -huh. ivory the, billy ivory the soulful yeah. inspirational inspirational artist, artist. that's a yes. term that i like to use uh, mm -hmm. to give it a different flavor than he's great isn't possible. he oh, he's Billy's great amazing. he's great and, and thanks to t life because t life is his manager and um, okay. i'm just working with billy and assisting and helping out with t life so i'm very grateful for that because t life is a a well knowledgeable very experienced yes. icon in philadelphia music mm -hmm. himself so yes he's he's a great guy and when i started when we started the indie show he uh he must have given me a 50 people interview right awesome. Choo, 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 awesome. Just right off yeah the he's well connected um yeah he's connected and he was very helpful yes in getting the indie show yes. started so yes. i want to thank you t yeah, you t. listening i want to thank <laughs> you for that so you're working with billy and what are you doing for him well billy is an uh, artist that wants to expand his his he does everything. Music, absolutely. And mm -hmm. he, he is also a pastor. Mm -hmm. And the music that he has out now is really about the times. It's about bringing people together and curbing this violence that's out here. And that's something that's right up my alley because I also work with the youth. When the years, uh, my earlier years with Miss Football? LaBelle, yes. Okay. I was able okay. to, with Miss Pat's permission, she allowed me to use her name and likeness, and we created a football league called the LCFL. It stood for mm -hmm. LaBelle Community Football League. Oh, okay. And Miss Pat was very kind enough to use her, 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 her name and likeness, mm -hmm. and I created this trophy that actually was the symbol of this crown, and this crown is the crown of Holly Selassie. Okay. For most people who don't know who Haile Selassie is, Haile Selassie is the direct descendant of the Queen of Sheba. Okay. So his line of ancestry goes way back to King Solomon. And he was the last known emperor of Ethiopia. And he stood for bringing everybody together, especially people of color from all over the world, mm -hmm. letting us know that we mm -hmm. had a great destiny. So I wanted to create the football league in his honor. So the, we created a trophy that looked like a Vince Lombardi trophy mm -hmm. that had a crown around it and the football. And so we would have a national championship game and it would be in California because I met a gentleman by the name of um, Tony Reed who had a team Tony out in Reed. California okay. called the Inglewood Blackhawks. And so, Tony, the first year we did an experimental where we just partnered up. Tony was impressed that I did everything I said I was going to do in helping, helping the league. And so Tony became a full-fledged member of the LCFL. And Tony's team is like a top 10 
super semi pro team. I mean, the way he treats his players, um, his team are always excellent. They're always ranked in the top 10 in the nation. Mm -hmm. So we had this national championship game where the winner in Philadelphia would play the winner in California. Now you have to remember, we have young men who have act, probably never left the community, yeah. never left the neighborhood. We put them on airplanes, flew them to California. <laughs> they had a whole entire weekend oh, where boy. they had a banquet, they had mm -hmm. a meet and greet, and then the following day they had a big game. This is stuff that colleges, college players would experience when we were doing it with young men. And we were also showing America and the world that you can have a street guy yeah, who that's didn't what go we to college, now. right? That's what we need. Who didn't go to college mm -hmm. and yet, tr you know, teach him discipline, teach him character, mm -hmm. develop him, and then allow him to compete with someone who went to a top 10 college. And some of these guys really were impressive. Mm -hmm. And some of, some of our players made it to the pros. They played for the Baltimore Ravens and yeah. stuff like that. Yes. And I'm seeing now, nowadays it's... Uh, well, it's, it's very few. Like, you don't see the youth outside like we used to. Yes. You know, riding their bicycles or at the different parks. or they, uh, They're in the house. Yes. And they're playing those violent games. Yes. Well, they're playing games. I can't say they're all violent. But, yes. you know, they're, p they're playing games. And they're not, you know, they're not socializing with, with each other. They're not l learning anything except playing those games. And... I can't help but think that that may have part, you know, like in all the violence that's going on. You know, you see it and you say, I can do that, you know, you know, and so they get involved in that. Yes. You know, they get involved in that kind of thing. My message to to the youth is that you need to get off those games. Now, right. my my little son always tells me, well, I want to be a gamer. Yeah, you need you want to be a gamer. But right now, you guys go to school. And you got to do good in school, and you got to learn. You got to ride your bicycle. You, you don't have time to be. Yes. You know? And um, it's it's and sometimes I don't. I'm tired, and they go in the game. And I say, "Oh, thanks for the games," because yes. I'm really tired. Yes. But then it's a time that you have to get them off too. Absolutely. And get them involved in things like you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, growing up, one 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 thing about this generation, kids don't go outside and play and run and sweat. No. So uh -uh. With, with the technology and the virtual experience, they want to escape from this world and get into the virtual world. Now, that that's a good and bad thing. I love technology. I think you have to combine the two. You have to mm -hmm. allow the children to, yeah. to get into some technology, but mm -hmm. yeah, get out there and exercise. Mm -hmm. Go run up and down the street and, and be a boy or be a little girl. Jump rope. Mm -hmm. You know, learn your neighbors. Be respectful. Mm -hmm. I think those traditional values that we learned growing up need to be implemented again with these young people. Mm -hmm. And I always think that any type of program, whether it's sports, whether it's music study, mm -hmm. whether it's any type of curriculum where children can come together and be a part of an organization, mm -hmm. that teaches them fundamental skills so they can prepare them for this world mm -hmm. and also teach them social skills. Yes, And social we're lacking skills. that. And, you know, yeah. that's I think that contributes to probably why the young people out here are not focused. Yeah. So... I think all of us need to come back together. Like they said, a, a, a village will raise a, a child. It we takes a village to, to raise yes, a child. That's what they said. Yes, Take a village. Mom used to always say that to, to us, and that's the truth. Yes. Well, did you tell me that you were doing some videos or something? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Earlier in my career, I did. Now, a I can't remember anything. <laughs> you know how it goes. No, no problem, okay. Doris. Thank okay. you. Uh, earlier in my career, I did a video. Um, for Rochelle Farrell. It's okay, called with here open we go. Arms. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's called it's called for open arms. It 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 it, it did a lot for my career. It was back in 1994. Um, I shot it here in Philadelphia. Um, it was a great experience. It gave me tremendous exposure. I played the lead in it, and the song, believe it or not, the song has a lot to do with my life. Like what happens in the video the character that i portrayed is very similar to what i experienced in my life so it was a great honor and rochelle farrell like miss labelle I know. she can Fabulous. hit all the different notes great singer now can we is that video on social actually media? it's on youtube you can mm -hmm. you can youtube rochelle farrell with open arms video and mm -hmm. poop it'll pop up my assistant posted it about i want to say maybe five or six years ago on YouTube, and we almost have a million viewers. Oh, my God. Before that, the video, believe it or not, wasn't even circulating. So until she posted it, it's really out there. Almost a million viewers have seen this video. So I'm very grateful. And thanks, Steph. Steph Maddox. He's the yeah. best. That's my assistant. 
Yes. And you've worked with some very, very powerful people. I'm very grateful. Yeah. I'm you, very grateful. You, you really have. And for, it's a lot of the, the uh, youth out there, adults, they're trying to get where, where you are. Yes. Because they may be, they play instruments, they're artists, they teach or play football. Yes. You do it all. And you have a lot of gifts that you can share with them. Yes. Well, I, I, I like to tell people all the time, this may sound cliche, however, believe. believe you yeah. have to believe in yourself. You know, I learned a long time ago during my acting studies, they used to always say, there's a million and one odds to make it. However, you got to be, you have to believe that you are that one. Don't yeah. believe you are the million. Believe yeah. you are that yeah. one that's in the million and know that you're going to succeed because there's nobody like you. Mm -hmm. And I used to hear other artists and other people who are so-called successful say the same thing. And I used to be like, that's so cliche, but it's mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. If you truly believe in yourself, because adversity is going to hit you every day. But don't focus on the negative. Focus on the positive things in your life. Even as little as it might, like you might have a glass of milk to drink today and you didn't have nothing else in the refrigerator. And you might be like, oh, I was hungry, but you had a glass of milk. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. focus and be grateful, right? Because yeah. they said a, a grateful person, yes. that means you're appreciating the blessings that the Most High has given you, no matter what it is. So if you're grateful for that, I believe that there's, you're going to get abundance of more. Yeah. And it's, that, it's really fundamental like that. So if you believe in yourself, don't mm -hmm. listen to the negative people yeah. and our friends. Yeah. Our so-called friends will tell us, oh, you're not going to make, you're not going to. There was a saying that actually a famous motivator speaker, Zig Ziglar, said, share not your dreams with those who share not your dreams. Not many people share your dreams, so mum's the word. Keep your own counsel. So that means don't share your thoughts. I know, I <laughs> Keep know. Keep it to But yourself. sometimes you get so excited. <laughs> yes. And you start saying, oh, and they're saying, oh, she's crazy, you know. Yes. And it knocks you down, but uh, you just get excited. But I've heard that, too. Yes. Keep it to yourself. Yes. They get yes. So, so slick with their wording. Yes. How's that little business Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that becomes a negative energy. And listen, I, I'm a firm believer of negative energy. So if you're if you have a positive mindset and you believe in yourself and just a slight word like that can is almost like as you incubating your thoughts and your mm -hmm. success. If you let people just say little sly negative stuff, you're going to absorb that and that'll block your blessing. Yeah. So yeah. everything I believe yeah. is is positive. Yeah. You know, positive energy is real. And that's very much similar to, as people say, how they believe in God, because I believe God or what we call the most high is nothing but an abundant source of positive energy. Mm -hmm. And if we understand that and we yeah. we know it's in us, then we are God like, you know, and we will live a righteous life. I really believe in that no matter what your faith is. Yeah. I believe if you live a righteous life, you can you will ma you'll be like a magnet to others of other faith. And all together, we are on the same mission. I really believe in so, that. So have you ever thought about doing public speaking? Um, no, I haven't. I, I do it. Add that. <laughs> Thank Add you, Doris. Many things that Thank you do. Thank you so much, Doris. Add that. Thank you so much. I'll be yeah. honored. Yeah, and, and, and then what are we going to be expecting from you now? Well, I have, a, I have a major project that I'm working with my partner regarding Mr. Lucas' life and legacy. Oh, um, okay. However, we're very close to getting it done, and I promise you, if you will have me, once we launch this, I would love to come back on oh, the show Gilbert and share and more I about it. I would love to have you. <laughs> yes, <because laughs> thank we, you, Gilbert. We invite our artists back <laughs> yes. because... We want to keep up with them. Absolutely. And the, the um, our friends and, and family, Facebook, they want to keep up with you too. Oh, thank you. You know, thank you. So and yeah, and we do, we do a lot of postings you. like your videos and yes. your photos and all that. Thank you. And they always want to know. So what is he doing? This is what he was doing last year. What what is thank he doing? Thank you so much. So you're always welcome to return. Thank you. And let us know what you're doing. Now, probably when I see you again, you'll be working with somebody else. You well, know? I'm grateful. You, yeah, you'll yes. be working with another um, legend. Yes, and yes. Well, you know, speaking of the legend, one of my mentors um, is actually, her name is Alvinia Bridges. Okay. She lives in New York City. Uh -huh. And Alvinia was someone early in my career that took me under her wing. Now, some people say, well, who's Alvinia Bridges? Well, Alvinia used to be the PR person for the Rolling Stones. Oh, God. So do you remember uh, the yeah. you remember the Benetton campaign back in the 90s where they had Benetton? It was a, a clothing. They, they used to have black and white. They She was one of the first persons that instrumented using a lot of white and black models, bringing them together, like okay. bringing the world together. Okay. And she was... Um, 
she learned a lot about concert production mm. um, and she was someone who really kept me focused and schooled me in the industry so Wonderful. I owe a lot of respect Wonderful. to Alvinia Bridges and Pat Evans you heard of Pat Evans no. Pat Evans was one it. of the, okay she was a legendary model from the 70s um, okay. you remember Isaac um, matter of fact Isaac Hayes had a famous album where he's bald headed and he's got this emperor outfit and he had a model yeah. with him Yeah, that was yeah. Pat Evans she became an international black model, and Beth Ann Hardison, oh, wow. Kadeem Hardison mother, was one of her models. So this, these are the women and people that kind of groomed me, and I was oh, that's I learned wonderful. from. So yes, that's you're right. Wonderful. I learned from a lot of legends. So your career is is just beginning because if you know all <laughs> those people, you're going to be involved in a lot more stuff. Yes. You know? Yes, I'm grateful. And also Kathy Hughes. I forgot Kathy to mention. Hughes. Yes, because Miss Hughes, just just a tidbit, because Miss Hughes was very supportive with the football program. She allowed her radio network, which was Radio One in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. to do a lot of advertising and promotion for our games and stuff. And she mm -hmm. actually attended one of the games mm -hmm. and came to see us perform. So Miss Hughes, Kathy Hughes, who's now, of course, TV One. And quick little story: uh, we had Great. a television show, mm -hmm. which is called "Living It Up with Patty Labelle," <laughs> that launched on TV One. And uh -huh. at the time, TV mm -hmm. One only had um, Tom Joyner had a show, and she had a bunch of reruns, and it was Patty Labelle show. And those three shows pretty much spearheaded the network. And look at TV One now. Yes, so, yes. And then backstory was Kathy Hughes and Miss Pat younger sister Jackie were best buddies, so mm -hmm. they were like so. I just thought it was only a natural fit when we got the opportunity to go to, to a, a TV network. Mm. We picked TV one because of that mm. relationship. Yes. Mm. So, so, so <laughs> how, since you work with all these people, I mean, how do you feel about it? I know you're blessed. Oh, I'm grateful. I know. And, and you learn a lot from these people, things that you've learned, these artists, professionals, that's going to move you forward. Yes. And then you can share a lot of this learning yes. with the youth, adults, and all coming up today. Yes. Okay. What inspirational words do you have for them today? Because there's, you know, there, this, this show is seen all over the world. Yes. And we want to leave with some inspirational words yes. to our followers. Yes. Well, I, I will honestly say, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have parents in your life, love yes. your parents, be oh, a respectful yeah. person, mm -hmm. love those around you, be generous in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, try not to keep bitterness. Try not to be vindictive mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. really focus on positivity, um, even in despair, even when things look dark or look like you have no hope. Believe. Yeah. Yeah, that's really yeah. what I want to just share yeah. with people. Believe in the believe that it will get better. You know, like if you look at when you're in the hospital and you see the heart rate, it goes up and down. Yes, life is like that. Mm -hmm. Life is never going to be up all the time. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to drop down. But when it drops down, still believe this is when you need to be even stronger because yeah. you're going to rise again. And I think that if we understand that when things are not going well, we're down, just believe, keep believing that it will get better. It will. Not just believe in it, but do all the proper things and yeah, preparation to make it better. To to make it yeah. better. Absolutely. You've got to do something I, positive. I agree with that. I, yes. I certainly agree with that because when you do that and you believe, you know, I don't think you can fail. That you is know, true. You only fail when you stop believing and you stop doing. That is true. You know, like I hear people say, well, I, I fail, I, you know, you fail because you stopped, you yes. know, you just stopped. But I want to thank you for coming on the oh, show thank today. Thank you, Doris, I'm honored. I, and thank I want to, we want to keep up with your progress. Thank you. And your career. Thank you. You send me, send us all these videos and photos. Yes, I will. And you stay with, stay with Billy uh, if you can. Oh, Billy is great. Because yeah. he's, he's running all over the place. Yes, Billy is great. But stay with him, stay yes. connected with T and all those other oh, absolutely. people. Absolutely, thank you, T Life. Yeah, and yes. all those other people that you mentioned, stay with them. Yes. Okay. I will. Okay, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay, if you don't call us, we uh, I will call you. <laughs> yes, okay. Doris, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you for thank being you. on the show. It's a tonight. pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you having me. Okay. Thank you. Bye. -bye.